who is joined today by um, my colleague Jason Ong, who is um, based in Kuala Lumpur. Hi, Jason. And waving at you right now. And um, a bit later, we'll be joined by one of our alumni and one of uh, and the president of our Thai society as well. So I'm going to you start the um, info session um, with a presentation on Southampton and some updates um, on the current um, situation on and coronavirus situation in the UK and at the university, um, and a little bit about te what teaching is looking like at the moment. Um, and then we'll have a chance to um, chat to our current student and our alumnus from Southampton to find out about their experiences. And I think they may be speaking to you in Thai. Um, so we'll start with the um, presentation. Um, please feel free to ask questions as we go along. Um, we will, my colleague Jason will be able to answer those in, in the chat for you. So I'm just going to share my screen. Can you, can you see that, Jason? Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, okay, great, thank you. So, um, yeah, so this is uh, Southampton. We're a very maritime city, as, as you can see, very water-based city. We were founded in 1862 as the Hartley Institute, and we were the first UK university to get chartered status from the Queen in 1952. Congratulations on getting an offer to study in a prestigious Russell Group University. We're a founding member of the, the Russell Group of Universities. I'll talk more about that in a moment. We're currently ranked number 15 in the UK, and we went up seven places in the world rankings this year, right up to number 90, so we're, we're happy with that. During lockdown, I've really had the time to explore Southampton because I'm not in Thailand, I've had to stay in Southampton. So I've really got to really enjoy all the beaches, green parks um, and the, the nice work life balance that we have here. And I think that's why we've been ranked as one of the best places to live and work in the UK. We're also a very young city. So our population is around 250,000. And of that population, around 40 to 50,000 are students, because there's two universities in the city. So there's University of Southampton, which is us, and then there's Southampton Solent in the city centre, which is a bit more um, vocational. So it's a young city. And you might be interested to hear that we're a very entrepreneurial university. So we're the number one global university business incubator. We're very good at mentoring and investing in our students' um, business startup ideas. And we've got 13 spin-out companies. So we, um, we have regular sort of mentoring um, events uh, and investment events where students can pitch their ideas to investors. Um, and we have a small business advice clinic on campus that students can use for free. Has any, have any of you been to the UK before? Uh, put in the chat if you've been to the UK and where, where you went. So just put in the chat if you've been to the UK, yes or no, and, and where, where you went. Never been, Nata. So that's exciting. <laughs> You've been to London, yeah, I imagine you would have been to London. Okay, so we are not far from London, so we're only about one hour, oh, half of them, sorry, very good. We're about one hour, ten minutes from London by train, and when you land in London Heathrow Airport, is a direct coach to our main campus, so it's very convenient. Um, and uh, we do have our own airport as well. So that's Southampton Airport, um, and it is not really somewhere you'd fly to from Thailand, but if you want to explore Europe while you're in England, then it's a very convenient place to fly to various capital cities in Europe. And um, when you first arrive in the UK, we do a free meet and greet pickup service. So we'll pick you up from any of the London airports and we'll take you directly, oh, sorry, London, Gatwick and London Heathrow usually, and we'll take you directly to your accommodation in Southampton. And we've carried on doing the meet and greet all the way through the pandemic. We, we carried on doing that service. So it's just nice when you arrive and you're tired, we will pick you up, don't worry. Um, 
And so this is our main campus in the picture and you can see how green it is. And the city itself as well is, is one of the greenest and sunniest cities in the UK. I'm really appreciating that, especially today, we've got a bit of sunshine and we tend to get a bit more warmth down here. So the further north you go in the UK, the colder and wetter it gets. So I do really appreciate living this far south. And we have, yeah, really good work-life balance and um, having so much green, so many green parks um, on our doorstep. We're also one of the safest cities in the UK, according to um, a recent survey. And um, I have to say that um, <clears throat> I, I really do feel safe here compared to most every other place I, I've lived, actually. Um, it's still a city, so you still need to be careful. And there's still areas you'll need to be, be careful to avoid, but um, it's, it's relatively safe. And that's partly because it's a, a medium sized city rather than one of the really big cities. And we've got um, quite a diverse com student community. So um, of um, about 26 and a half thousand students, about a third are from um, outside of the UK. So in a normal non-COVID year, we'd normally have around 160 Thai students on campus. So a huge thriving Thai society and Thai community for you to join in. <clears throat> Um, and we've got seven campuses. So we've got five in Southampton, one in Winchester and one in a camp in, in near to you in, in Malaysia. So that the Malaysia one is mostly um, undergraduate courses. And then we've got our faculty of medicine at the hospital. We've got um, in the orange there, you can see our National Oceanography Centre. So that's um, a leading place in Europe to study courses like ocean um, oceanography, or marine biology. And that's approximately where the city centre is. And then we've got um, our Avenue campus, and that's our humanities campus. So if you're studying um, teaching English or film studies, those kind of courses will be there. In the red, we've got our Boulderwood Innovation campus. So that is um, our fairly new engineering campus with absolutely amazing facilities there. And then we've got our main campus, the Highfield campus. That's where our business school is based. So that is where most of our Thai students will be studying. Um, and from the Highfield campus to the city centre, approximately where the orange circle is, is about 30 minutes by bus. And then in another city called Winchester, um, we have, which is about 10 minutes from Southampton, we have our School of Art and we get Thai students there studying courses like luxury brand management, global advertising and branding, fashion marketing, th those kind of courses. So it's an extremely exciting place to study um, arts courses. And that is actually only about 45 minutes from London. So really good for networking. <clears throat> So I mentioned that we are a Russell Group University. Um, does anybody want to try guessing in the chat how many Rus um, universities are in the Russell Group? So put a, a number in the chat if you think you know how many universities make up the Russell Group. Don't be shy. How many universities are in the Russell Group? 10? Good, 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 good guess. Good guess, because in Australia, they have the group of eight. So that's a very good guess. It's actually 24. Thank you for your guess. <laughs> um, 24 um, prestigious institutions in this group. So that includes Oxford and Cambridge. Um, and that, so, so they're, they're, they tend to have very good um, national and international reputations. Um, so you've done well to get in. Well done. Um, and they tend to be very research intensive. And that benefits you because the research brings in money, which we then invest into our facilities for students. And you'll be getting some of that cutting edge latest research in your teaching. So sometimes that research hasn't even been published yet and you're gonna have that in your teaching. So examples of things we've been researching into during the pandemic have included, <coughs> um, we've been part of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine trials, um, and we've been using drone technology to fly medical supplies to a nearby island. And our business school has been researching into, um, into panic buying. There was that panic buying last year at the beginning of the um, pandemic. We had a shortage of toilet rolls here. Uh, so our business school decided to research into, into whether pictures of empty shelves in supermarkets um, 
made people do more panic buying? And the answer was yes. So in terms of careers, um, it's very important, obviously, to think about life after university, or perhaps you're, you're doing this to boost a career you're already doing. And I'd really encourage you to make the most of the career service if you come to the UK, because most UK universities have excellent um, career services, a huge um, ra range of um, services available to you. Um, and we do have various internships as well. Some of our courses have three month internship opportunities as part of the course. And um, we have subject specific careers fairs. So um, we get top employers coming to our campus to recruit our students. And some of our courses have things like employability modules built into the course, um, and guest lectures, alumni speakers and things like that, because we just really want our students to do well after they finish. If, you're, if you hold an offer for an undergraduate course, which I imagine won't be too many of you, but if you do, um, just bear in mind that most of our undergraduate courses have the option of a year in employment. So that'd be something you would do um, decide on when you get to Southampton and you could go to our career service and say, I want to do this um, extra year in my third year. Can you help me to apply? And you will then, they'll help you with your application and they'll support you through that and you'll get paid and, and build a nice link with the company. So accommodation, I don't know if any of you attended our virtual accommodation week recently, but we had quite a few talks on things like which accommodation to choose uh, and various other topics. Um, but um, we do have 10 accommodation buildings in university accommodation buildings. And in the UK, we actually um, call these halls or halls of residence. So we've got 10 halls at Southampton. And of course, there's quite a lot of private housing as well. Um, so all our university accommodation is five to 30 minutes from the main Highfield campus. Um, if you're an international student, then you are actually guaranteed a place in that accommodation for one year if you're a postgraduate student or the full three or four years if you're doing undergraduate study so you always get your own bedrooms don't worry you won't be sharing a bedroom um, and you can choose to pay a bit more and have your own bathroom if you if you want to you can cook for yourself or you can um, be part catered so that's two meals a day provided Monday to Friday during term time and there's quite a few Asian supermarkets around town and near the university. And, and there's an international food shop 10 minutes away as well. So that's quite easy to find lots of um, exotic to us <laughs> um, food or more local to you food um, close to the university. Um, and that the, the university accommodation includes 24 hour security and, and swipe card um, access. And a really nice thing is that it includes um, an annual bus pass on these um, university buses called Unilink. You can see the picture there. Uh, so those buses link all our Southampton campuses, all our Southampton accommodation buildings, our city centre and our airport. They go approximately every 10 minutes during peak times and they've got Wi-Fi on board. Um, so I, I actually don't have a car here. Um, so you don't need one, uh, and especially if you have that annual bus pass, um, if you're living in our accommodation. And if you're not living in our accommodation, then you can buy daily, weekly, monthly or yearly tickets on those buses anyway. And a really uh, good thing to point out to you right now is that this year, um, if you are choosing a 51 week um, contract to an our accommodation, then you will get um, five weeks free. So you'll only pay for 46 weeks. So that's a really nice incentive to choose one of the longer contracts. Um, hopefully you already know if you've been um, awarded one of our merit scholarships, um, it should say on your offer letter um, and all international students are automatically considered for these scholarships when they apply. Um, so these are based on your, your grades. We want to attract good students and that's why we've got these scholarships. So we have up to £3,000 um, for um, uh, undergraduate studies, up to £5,000 for postgraduate and three, six, or £9,000 if you're um, going to be studying an MBA with us. 
And I think most of our Thai students would be in our business school. So I'll just highlight those um, scholarships. So those would be either a three or five thousand pound automatic scholarship um, based on your GPA, which would be either a 2.8 if you've studied at one of the top Thai universities or a three if not. Um, or oh, 5,000 would be a GPA of 3.3 to 3.5 um, uh, uh, from, from a Thai, your Thai university. And for the MBA, um, it would be up to £9,000 based on various criteria, such as how well you do in the interview, um, evidence of rapid career progression, um, and how well they think you're going to contribute. And I should just say, if, you, if you've been awarded um, a Thai government scholarship or another scholarship, you would not get our merit scholarship as well. It's, it's one or the other. So um, on to life on campus before we're joined by um, our Thai students. So we've got very good sports facilities. We've got over 90 sports clubs, very good um, gym equipment and gym classes, climbing wall, um, quite a lot of water sports you can join in as well. And then a really big part of UK university life is all the clubs and societies that you can join. So at Southampton, we have over 300 clubs and societies that you can join outside of your course. Um, and these are a really good way to have fun, make friends or learn something new, maybe learn a new skill that you could put on your CV. Um, we recommend you join at least one because it is a big part of UK university life. And it might be that you join the Thai society, for example, so this is just some of those um, over 300 clubs and societies. I'll move on, <laughs> we'll be here a while. Hopefully you've seen something that would take your interest. And um, we, if you like Harry Potter, you might like to know that we have a Quidditch club and I still need to learn how that actually works. <laughs> um, in terms of facilities, um, I'll just skip through these a little bit. Um, this is. Um, just to, to mention that there's a lot of support available for you. We want you to be happy. We want you to do well. So we have visa drop-in sessions you can book if you want visa support. If you want extra English language support, um, then there is, you have to get the correct IELTS or equivalent to come to Southampton with your visa. But if you want extra support when you're here, then we do have free in-sessional English and then we do things like um, before the exams, we get animals on the campus for the students just to stroke and just calm down before their exams. So we, there's a lot of support. So my main advice if you come to university in England is talk to somebody if you have any problems, if you're depressed, anxious, if you have money problems, talk to somebody because we can help you, we can support you and we want to be there for you before it becomes a big problem. Our main library, um, open 24 hours a day at key times, five storeys, high-speed high Wi-Fi throughout. Um, we've got two GP surgeries on campus. Um, and if, um, if you um, are of the correct age group, when the vaccines come around to your age group in the UK, then because with your visa you pay an international health surcharge, that means that you would be eligible to have the vaccine here when your age group comes around and you will be treated like a UK citizen if you get ill. So if you get ill, you can access UK hospitals, UK doctors as if you were a UK citizen. So don't worry. We will not say, oh, they're Thai. We don't want to treat them. That's not how it works because with the visa, you're paying to access our healthcare as if you were a UK citizen. Sports Centre, the banks and post office, and then there's our students' union. So this is where we have Starbucks and a few other places to eat and drink, an American diner, a lettings agency for private rented accommodation, a shop and a hairdresser. So I had my hair cut in the hairdressers there last week for the first time since lockdown ended. And um, a cinema as well, where you can um, get to uh, watch a film with, with popcorn and everything. And then just outside the Students' Union is our brick concourse. So this is where we have a weekly farmer's market um, and you can buy nice um, fresh fruit and vegetables and fish and bread uh, there every week um, on campus. And then we also celebrate things like Chinese New Year and various other events um, just outside the, new, uh, the um, Student Union. 
And then just behind the student union is our um, Valley Gardens. So these are a really lovely place to hang out. And this is what it looks like at the moment because it's spring, we've got these beautiful spring flowers in Southampton. So a little bit about the city, um, just to, to finish off. We're a very maritime port-based city, as I said. So yesterday I was cycling along the beach and looking at all these big ships that come and going. So we've got, um, we're something like the sixth busiest port city in the UK. Um, lots of cruise ships come and go from here. And when the Evergreen got stuck in, um, in Egypt in the Suez Canal, a lot of the ships in the queue behind it were waiting to come to Southampton. Can anybody um, uh, unmute themselves or write in the chat? to say um, whether they know which famous boat sailed from Southampton in 1912. Feel free to put that in the chat if you know the answer. Which famous boat sailed from, yes, very good. It is the Titanic, well done. So that sailed from Southampton. We've got a Titanic museum, lots of history, and then um, you can often go past someone's house and see a, like a, a plaque saying um, the steward from the Titanic lived here. So it's quite interesting. And then what I absolutely love about living here is um, all the things around Southampton. So you've got all the facilities of a city, but everything um, on the doorstep is very countryside-y. <laughs> um, got quite a few beaches within 30 minutes. Um, and then we've got this national park, New Forest National Park, with 5,000 horses wild horses just walking around um, really nice to go cycling and walking in bottom right is the Isle of Wight where we're all going to go on holiday this year because we can't go abroad so we're going to all go there because it's got nice beaches and it's about 30 minutes by boat from Southampton and it's famous at the moment because it's where we trialed our contact tracing app for Covid and then bottom left is Winchester, where we have our School of Art. And Winchester is about 10 minutes from Southampton. And it was the capital city of England before London. So every year there's a really big Christmas market with ice skating rink and nice Christmas um, food and drink. And it's a very historic city. If you want to chat to any of our students and staff um, a bit more informally, um, then feel free to scan this QR code and um, find a student that you want to chat to. It could be somebody from Asia or somebody on your similar course to you, or I'm on there as well, if you want to chat to me there, um, then that's an easy way to chat on demand. And then just um, finally, a little bit about the coronavirus situation in the UK at the moment, because I'm sure that you're hearing lots of different things in your media, and I'm sure that it's um, something that you'd like to find out more about. Um, so as of the 8th of March, we started to unlock um, we've been we had a lockdown from January. Um, and so from the 8th of March, we started to slowly we're in a roadmap out of lockdown from the 8th of March. So from the 8th of March, um, schools opened and actually some of our students went back to campus that date. So on the 8th of March, our practical courses went back. So I've, I've been on campus and I've seen them all having their classes. Um, from the 12th of March, hairdressers and um, non-essential retail, non-essential shops opened again um, and we could eat and drink outdoors as well. So that was really nice. And then last Monday was a really key event because May the 17th, we can now meet in groups of six indoors. <laughs> so we can see our friends indoors again in groups of six in, in, in our houses and also in restaurants, at cafes, pubs. And the other day I was cycling past the Saints football stadium, which is our famous football stadium. And I realised that that football matches were back on because I was cycled past a lot of football fans going into a match. So they're back on. And then the 21st of June, my birthday, is the, uh, the really big day when the government is hoping to lift all, all limits. So that means nightclubs might open and, and all sorts. Um, so that's, that's the big day when we're hoping to um, re release all the restrictions. So in terms of teaching, um, we, um, we had a January intake this year, and that's not something we normally have, but we had a January intake because most, we realised that most of our students wanted their September courses moved to January. So we had that this year. 
those students were asked by the UK government to stay in Thailand and start online. Although some of our Thai students did still come here in January because they wanted to start here and have the full experience. And that was fine, they came, but we were encouraging them to stay in Thailand if they could. Um, and so those students now for semester two, which starts on the 7th of June, we are asking them to come to Southampton and we're hoping to sort of start the teaching um, face to face again. And come September, we are hoping to, we're planning to, for face-to-face -face teaching. We are expecting that some of the really big lectures, maybe 200 people, may be online because we'll, we will still be expecting to have some social distancing and there will be some capacity issues if we try to put 200 people in one room. But we are hoping for as much face-to-face -face as possible. Obviously, we are still having a backup plan of online because we don't know you know, nothing's guaranteed right now, as, we, as we've all learnt this year. So we are planning, we've got a backup um, online. We'd be silly not to do that, but we're hoping for, for face to face. Um, vaccines are going really well. And I think this is why we're um, hoping to unlock on the 21st of June. About 70% of UK adults have had their first vaccination um, and 21 million, I think, have had their second vaccination. We're now on to the 30s age group. Anyone over 32 can book an appointment. Um, and we've reached, um, uh, we've sort of, we've got, we've vaccinated our healthcare staff and those in the top priority groups as well. So that's a real success. We are now, as of, as of last Monday, travel is no longer um, illegal overseas so we are now having a, a traffic light system so this is where something you might have been worried about can i come to the uk yes you can thailand is an amber country so um at the moment <laughs> so um and I, I i would anticipate you would stay amber or maybe move to green um by september so amber country um travellers will need, when they arrive in the UK, they need to quarantine for 10 days at the moment. That's not 10 days in a hotel. So the red list is the one you don't want to be on. That's the one where you have to quarantine in a, in a hotel. But the amber list, you only need to quarantine in university accommodation for 10 days and then take some PCR tests as well. So that one at the moment is not too bad, is the red list where you'd have to pay that hotel fee to quarantine but I don't see Thailand going onto the red list. The red list is places like India and Brazil and South Africa for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, just to say as well that at the University of Southampton, we've done an excellent job um, of keeping numbers on, uh, amongst our students and staff extremely low. Like I've been so proud of the university um, and you can see that at the moment we have um, no new positive cases amongst our students and no new positive cases amongst our staff. So um, really, and that's, you know, 8,000 staff, 24 and a half thousand students. And part of the reason we've managed to do so well is because we, in June, the government asked the university and the staff to, so the university and the hospital to trial some saliva testing so because that trial went well in June, the university was allowed to use saliva testing um, for its students and staff. And so anyone on campus is allowed to have some free saliva tests. And therefore, we've been able to keep the situation very much under control in amongst our staff and students. And that will continue next year as well. That's saliva testing. If you have any questions at any point over the next few months, please feel free to get in touch. Um, I don't mind if your English is not perfect, just contact me. Um, mine, um, you can just call me Lizzie and you can email me on e.airs at soton.ac.uk. And if you want to get a feel for the, South, for the campus, then do have a look at our Instagram. That's eurs.international. And that's all um, photos and videos taken by our international students. So that's my overview. Um, and uh, I think we should have now with us um, a couple of Thai students. So one is one of our alumni. Um, are you here, Max? Uh, sorry, Aim. Aim's here. Yes, I can see Aim. Hi, Aim. 
Hey, what did you study with us? I did computer science. And that was uh, a master's? It was a bachelor's. Bachelor's. Yeah. And when did you graduate? Was it 2006? Yes, that's right, yeah. Fantastic. Um, and, um, and Max, um, are you here? I think you are here, aren't you? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Hi, Max. Max is, are you currently the president of our Thai society? Yes, I'm currently yes. uh, president yes. of society. Yeah. Great. So uh, Max is here um, and you graduated, haven't you now? Yes, I already graduated uh, last year. You were here during COVID, weren't you? You were here right at the beginning yeah. of the pandemic. You yeah, can yeah. I came back to Thailand like uh, on generally this year. Yes, <laughs> and you're both based in um, Bangkok, Bangkok, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, if anybody has any questions for the students, please feel free to um, type them in the chat. Um, but I've got a few questions for you, if that's okay. And feel free to answer in Thai if, if you prefer. So I just wondered, um, either of you can answer as you like. Um, what, was, what, what made you choose um, Southampton as a university? Okay, I can start first. Um, I'll just do that in Thai, but but just short answer in English is the campus. So I had a chance to um, you know visit the university mm -hmm. back back you know back back. I was actually in the UK, and then um, you know I had a chance to visit the uh, the open day of the university. Mm -hmm. So then um, you know I had you know I, I compared like you know Southampton mm -hmm. with with you know some university in, in in London, and then you know I just fell in love with with the campus in Southampton. You know there's a lot of green green space, and just like in the picture that you show, and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just it's just like a a new um, uh, you know uh, it's very nice environment and you know so um, so that was my 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 pick uh, Southampton. Great, right, thank you. Anything anything to add, Max? Or don't feel you have to. Yeah, uh, basically because like uh, my background is uh, I used to work in navy, so I the reason I. Uh, choose Southampton because the city is really small and uh, I think it's easy to uh, stay mm -hmm. and live. Yeah, very happy. And uh, I study supply chain and logistic management. So uh, as you mentioned, Southampton is the very big port uh, of United Kingdom. So that's why I choose Southampton. Great. <laughs> and what was your favorite thing about Southampton when you were actually here? What do you miss about Southampton? Uh, I love the city. Yeah, mm -hmm. as, yeah, as I told you, the city is very small. So it's very easy to uh, live there. And you can see uh, many gardens that we can walk every day. And uh, the weather is very good. So yeah, I really miss Southampton. <laughs> I prefer your weather, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, Aim, anything you particularly miss? Um, I, I miss the environment. You know, it's it's just a nice balance of the city to live in, and also you have um, you know, you have like uh, the university itself is is, and then you know you have a shopping shopping area at the city center, so it's not too far. Like, you know, when you want, you know, nice and quiet, you know, time to study, then, then you have the university. And if you want to, you know, like have some, you know, like nightlife or, you know, or shopping, then you can go to the city center to enjoy it. And it's not too far from London as well. So just, you know, one hour and a half to, to get there. So it's just, just a very good combination of, of everything, really. Yeah, that's how I how I feel about it as well. And and did you um did you guys live in university accommodation? Uh, to be honest, I I live in the private accommodation, yes. but I prefer to stay in the city center. Okay. Yeah. 
but I, I have heard from uh, my friends who live in uh, university accommodation. That's quite good because it's near university mm. and it's very uh, quiet place to, yeah, if you want to really uh, study. Mm -hmm. um, I stayed, my first year I stayed in uh, West Six Lane. So I did, I did one year in, um, in the university hall and mm -hmm. then I, I felt I liked it because, you know, all my friends are there, you know, and, um, and it's not too far from, from, from the university. And it's near the river, isn't it, Wessex Lane? Yes, that's right. Yeah, and then there's a park. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I live near the river and I, like, I really like oh, it. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and um, how did you find it? Did you manage to find Thai food or did you manage to eat? Were you happy with the food? Uh, did you manage to cook Thai food? I or think on the Burgess Road, there's some restaurant that, that sell Asian food. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not, you know, too bad. Or otherwise, you know, I learned how to cook back in the, in the UK. So, um, so yeah, I think it's, it's great. Did you eat much English food? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. 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 And um, did you guys feel just safe in Southampton? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I can say that it's very safe in Southampton because like I told you uh, the South Southampton is not the big, big city. So yeah, only place that uh, is might make you feel uh, dangerous is in the garden in the night. So mm. yeah, if you not like walk away in the night and uh, alone, so it's very safe in Southampton. Yeah, don't walk through a park at night time in any city. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good good advice. So I stayed three years and there's no problem as well. I think it's a very safe city to live. And what about um, during the pandemic, um, Max? Did you still feel safe um, in terms of, you know, there's been lots of news about racist attacks and things. You didn't experience anything like that. Did you feel safe in that sense? Uh, uh, for the first wave of the COVID uh, pandemic uh, in UK, I, I fly back to Thailand. But <laughs> after that, I heard uh, from my uh, friends, like many, many of my friends, who still in the Southampton uh, back then, uh, there is no case. There was no case uh, for a student uh, infected by COVID. So I started to go back uh, to Southampton and uh, continue to stay uh, until uh, January this year. Uh, I don't see any uh, dangerous uh, things about COVID. Uh, yeah, I, I can say that I live there very normally, normal. I remember when you came back, was it in June or July? Uh, I think in uh, August, maybe. It was August. I remember and you were really surprised because you thought it was going to be like a horror show and it, and it wasn't, it was quite normal and you were really surprised, weren't yeah. you? <laughs> yes, it's really normal. Yeah, really you were quite surprised. To, yeah, to go back. And um, do you um, have any advice for uh, students coming to Southampton? Anything you wish that you had known or anything you think they should know? So uh, I'm not sure now that uh, there is any uh, like group for uh, new student, new student who will be uh, studying this year. So I, I, if there is, uh, if there is not, I will uh, create a like group uh, for uh, students this year, mm -hmm. uh, and and I will post it in the in the group of last year. So I'm not sure that uh, if anyone can put in the chat that there is any like group for for you guys to to ask any question. Okay, so you don't have that link yet, but you will have it nearer the time. Yeah. Okay, so um, you'll send me that link and then when, if anybody wants that link, you can contact me in a month or two, we should have that link for you. Is that okay? Yeah. Can they contact you on um, Facebook or Instagram at all? Uh, I cannot see yet, but I, I have uh, talked to some of uh, new students, but I'm not sure that they will go to study this year or they got uh, any offer from university yet. So 
yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, These because... students all have offers or should all have an offer to study, <laughs> everyone here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so if if anyone know me, just uh, contact me in the live. It's, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Uh, for so Sultan Thai society, uh, we also have a Facebook and Instagram. So if everyone want to know how live, but unfortunately, uh, my year is uh, yeah, got COVID, so so we cannot like have uh, events all the all the year but you can see in the social media that uh, in the half first half year we have a uh, event mm -hmm. a lot of event and yeah and if you fancy putting those links into the chat so they can look you up on facebook and instagram that would be fantastic okay. thank you and um, Aim, just wondering um, what you're doing now. Did, did, South, did the degree help you to get a good job in, in a, something that you enjoy? Oh, yes. Um, so, uh, so, you know, when I was in the university, um, being part of the, um, so, I, you know, I get some, like, uh, uh, some job opportunity, opportunities mm -hmm. sent to my email. And then I did apply to some and went for the interview. Um, I think it was really good that, you know, um, I think because Southampton has a lot of connections with the, you know, uh, many employers and, and um, so, so that, you know, was a good chance. But at the moment I'm doing, um, I work as an investment analyst mm -hmm. um, yeah. and um, yes, uh, doing, doing good, yeah. Great, fantastic. And, and Max, are you still, you, you found a job, haven't you, I think? Uh, yeah, uh, now I'm just, I, I just come back from the uh, UK, so I just use this time to, to relax first. <laughs> Don't blame yeah, me. COVID, but I'm, yeah. I'm thinking about uh, to start uh, my business in mm -hmm. uh, Hat Yai, which is, where is uh, in southern part of Thailand with some mm -hmm. foreigner uh, who I get from a uh, uh, study in Southampton. So I can say that, yeah, if you study there, uh, for master degree, you will know a lot of friends, uh, especially a foreigner that you can work with uh, in the future. Fantastic. Yeah, a huge, huge group of Thais students in Southampton, isn't there? Yeah, normally uh, we have around 100 plus. 160 yeah. normally, yeah, around 160. Yeah. So, yeah. Really good. It's one of our main uh, countries where we get where we receive students to study with us. So. And what would you say most of the Thai students are studying with us? The business courses, like digital marketing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that uh, uh, for my years, the famous famous course is digital marketing. Yeah, and everyone will come to study in <laughs> and, and yeah. As you know that Thai people love to study about a uh, business. Mm -hmm. So Southampton is very really famous for the business course. And yeah. mo uh, moreover, uh, we got uh, Winchester as well. So yeah, who want to study about art or entertainment, you can go there. Yeah, it's very famous as well. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um... Oh, I had another question. I can't think what it was now. Oh, I know. Um, what um, did you find was the main difference in learning styles? Did you find it quite different studying in the UK compared to Thailand in terms of the learning style? Yeah, I can say that is very different. Uh, and yeah, especially I study in the military school uh, mm -hmm. in Navy. So I'm, I'm not sure that how study in the University of Thailand. But I can say from my friend that uh, we almost struggle in the in the first first part of the study. But I can I can confirm that everyone will pass two. Uh, you can you can study in the UK very easy if you uh, adapt to the to the culture of UK. Yes. Okay, thank you. What about you, Aim? Did you? I guess you were already in the UK when you started your degree, weren't you? That's right. Yes, I, I did uh, high levels, and but mm. but yes, uh, it was because I did uh, computer science, so there was a lot of practical uh, work to do, and um, 
because it's more like learn by doing and and also you know uh, during the lecture is also you know the 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 professor give you um, guidance and and then you also have to study on your own i think it's a good way because in in real life um, you also have to you know uh, uh, study on your own and and figure out because there's some new problem you know maybe it's not in the book or something so that's true yeah i think um that's what i heard from some of the thai students that there's more we encourage you to participate and have a di different opinion to other people which perhaps might not be a cultural thing for you to do is that did you notice that sort of yes, that's right yes yes um there's a lot of discussion in the class it's not like you know a lecturer just give give a lecture but but more like you know like talking during the class as well just um because uh there's some new you know up, something up there and and you know we can discuss about it so so you're encouraged to give your own opinion and right. if it's different to other people and that's part of the learning process and and also you know if you're used to say your teacher as you were saying max your teacher saying do this do this do this university in the uk is a bit different you, you'll be expected to do independent study manage your time and you you have to plan out how you're going to fit your work in but there are personal academic tutors aren't there did you ever go and see your personal academic tutor for help either of you so i had i had the um, tutor as well and then we we get to meet him once a week and mm -hmm. he also kind of uh, help if there's anything, um, any problem, you know. so we kind of check out on, on, on us. Good. Did you feel supported by, by him? Yes, that's right, yes. Okay, good, yeah. For me, okay. yeah. yeah, for me, I, I never use uh, any support, but yeah, I, <laughs> as a president, I, I ever use the support for my friends. Yeah, and university will uh, support us everything that we need. So don't worry for the new student. Yeah. <laughs> and the worst case scenario, if you don't know who to go to for help, you can always contact me or the Thai Society and we can point you in the right direction. Yeah. Um, anything else that either of you would like to add before we finish or any more questions from anybody while well, we've got AIM and Max here? If you'd like to ask any questions, feel free. And Aim and Max, if you have anything else you'd like to add, then please do feel free. Uh, yes. So uh, I think this this is a good time for uh, me to meet a new student who will go to study uh, next year. So uh, actually, I'm a president of uh, last two year, but uh, for this year, that there, there is no any uh, committee. Uh, in 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 Southampton, because yeah, because of COVID, so uh, I'm not sure that anyone here want to be like a uh, president of next year or uh, <laughs> it, uh, some of uh, you can you can uh, you can be like uh, just member of the committee, yeah. So just contact me and uh, I can create a like group for us. So so it's very important for you guys to uh, to create a committee that you can have uh, your own uh, supporting. And, and yes, uh, we, we also have the uh, money for supporting uh, Thai students, but uh, for, for this year, uh, yeah, they cannot use it because, of, uh, because they don't have a committee. So if you want to be the committee for the next year, please contact me. Yeah. So the money comes from the student union to help you. So the money's there. It's just you need the people. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Nutter is just asking if you joined any of the student clubs at the university, either of you? I joined the Badminton Colors Club. And, and you know, we, 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 we also go to compete with different universities. Uh, so it's a good chance to, um, you know, to meet another uh, people in another university. I think there's a lot of other clubs that you guys can join as well, I think. 
And I know that the some of the Southeast Asian societies have been joining to do big sports events. And last year we had a big Southeast Asia festival on campus um, with a few of the Southeast Asian societies joining together to promote Southeast Asia through dancing, singing, food and, and things like that. So there's quite a lot of joining up of societies, which is nice. Yeah. OK, um, I think we'll end there then. Um, unless there's anything else anyone would like to add, um, but I'm aware that we said this would be one, one hour, um, so I don't want to take too much of your time. We have recorded the event, so we will send through the recording to you. So if you wanted to watch it again or share with any of your friends who couldn't make it, then um, you can do so. So we'll get that to you as soon as we can. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, um, just uh, repeat my email address into the chat. Um, you can contact me at any time um, if you have any questions. Um, and um, uh, if you are an unconditional offer holder, then I would encourage you to get your CAS questionnaire back to us as quickly as possible so that you can join the queue to get your CAS um, for your visa. So thanks very much. And we're really looking forward to welcome you, welcoming you to Southampton in July or, or September. Thanks very much as well, Max and AIM. Really nice to have you with us. Yeah, my pleasure to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.